What's going on folks? Welcome back to another one of my world building videos where I come up with various creature designs and their lore. Big thanks to all of you who have been supporting me by subscribing to the channel and helping me build up the community. So let's talk about this first creature design here. As you see from the references, I wanted to combine aspects of rhinoceros beetles, actual rhinos, and a styracosaurus to tie it all together. My idea for this creature is that it's a large herbivore that roams in large herds throughout the grasslands. It's a mostly peaceful animal, in fact it's almost oblivious to the world around it. Because they're so massive and heavily armored, they just naturally feel very little could threaten them. Picture them as like these big, dumb, chill cows who are spending their entire day just grazing. Also, those beetle-inspired horns there aren't what you might be thinking that they are. Sure, if need be, they can use them to ward off predators or even joust with one another. But, what's unique about them is that they can discharge a bolt of lightning from them. Just imagine like this web of lightning channeling from one of those little teeth-like spikes to the next, almost like a taser with its prongs. And then it fires out like a railgun. They generally never use this ability unless under extreme circumstances and the rare occasion they do feel some sort of threat. Also, it's super random, but I kind of modeled that large hump-like plating off the thick neck pad you see some football players wear. Like, whenever you see a linebacker or fullback with one of them, you pretty much know that dude hits like a damn truck. Just pure USDA grade A beef right there. Absolute units. Another thing about this creature design is that I couldn't quite figure out what color I wanted to go with. I wanted something vibrant modeled off of insects and had this idea of like an electric blue sort of theme. But then I was like, but what about if I went this route or that route and was just unable to decide what really would look best. So I did the only logical thing and decided to make nine different color variations of this creature uh, that you will be seeing once this piece here is completed. Um, then I thought of this like lore reason behind all the different color variations uh, being that there's these nine different slaghorn shepherds throughout the world and the color differences is actually bred into the animals as like a branding so you know these belong to each specific uh, herder. For those of you who are Final Fantasy VII fans think of the different chocobo ranchers in each region who all have their own unique colors. Now, these animals are almost impossible to domesticate by anyone else, uh, so these shepherds are kind of recognized as like masters who are uh, some of the only few who know the secrets to the domestication of the slaghorns. And I was thinking like maybe, maybe these shepherds uh, throughout these regions, maybe they all kind of descend from one original family who learned how to tame these beasts. And then the children who inherited this all wanted to make their own mark and prove that they're better than their siblings. So they all kind of broke off from one another uh, to prove that their slaghorn breed is the best. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way this one turned out and I definitely want to do some more creature designs like these that aren't just monstrous foes and dangers that inhabit my world here. So I will probably start planning some more beasts in all sorts of sizes and variations that are friendly or function in some sort of way that's in unison with the many different races. Let me know what y'all think, or just give me some uh, things or ideas of, you know, what you would like to see in the comments below. But anyways, here is the completed bestiary entry for the Slaghorn. So let me go ahead and narrate its lore entry here for you, and then I'll show you the other color variations. The heavily armored Slaghorn wanders about the central grasslands in large herds. They spend most of the day grazing, rarely ever looking up to see their surroundings. Because of their incredible mass and thick protective plating, they almost dismiss the potential of anything being a threat. But a strong defense is not their only advantage. These large herbivores are capable of firing a bolt of lightning from their horns, effectively warding off any potential predators. Some incredibly brash individuals have even learned how to tame and use the slaghorn as a beast of burden. Alright, so now let me go ahead and show you all the different color variations for the slaghorn. 
All right, and here you can see the nine variations. Um, the only skin color that I came up with a name for is the one in the middle row to the right, the uh, light green and red one. Um, I'm calling that one Honeycrisp because I literally based it off of an apple. Um, but I couldn't, I didn't want to, you know, spend the time thinking of each different color variation. So what I want y'all to do in the comments down below, um, come up with some cool, uh, name ideas for these different, uh, color variations. Uh, I just think that'll be a, a fun thing to do. So sound off in the comments below if you have any cool ideas, uh, for them. But with that one done, let's go ahead and move to the next creature design of this video. So this creature design I'm working on is going to be a wyvern that I kind of wanted to be associated with the undead or just darkness in general. It's not an undead species, but I wanted it to look like a creature you could see a powerful necromancer using as a mount. My original concept was to create a wyvern who used its wings basically to walk around on in a similar fashion to a spider, uh, but I just couldn't quite get it to look right uh, so I had to scrap that idea for now and instead I just gave it more bat like wings which is cool as well because um, that works perfectly into the horror or creature of the night kind of theme I was going for I wanted to make its body very slender to play up that creepy aspect as well and of course to give it that more skeletal kind of look I added a bunch of bony spines protruding all along its back um, and on its throat and chest. I took some inspiration from those cool ass flying mounts that the Nazgul from the Lord of the Rings would ride. I believe they're called uh, black wings or like they're also referred to as fell beasts. Another random creature I drew inspiration from as well is actually the Xenomorph, uh, which you will kind of notice more once the piece is colored and all that. So the name of this species is the Ghost Tail Wyvern. They are nocturnal creatures and usually are seen around areas that are associated with death, such as graveyards or battlefields where horrendous wars occurred, uh, where there's just like this lingering feeling of despair and sadness. These creatures aren't evil or anything like that, but because they are often associated with these dark things, uh, they are often perceived as being evil. And their breath isn't actually like a normal fire, but instead this spectral green flame that is actually similar to a shadow magic. Uh, which, side note, in this world there's all those, you know, classical fantasy elements like fire, water, earth, air, etc. Um, and shadow is also one of those elements, uh, with its opposite being, you know, like holy magic or light magic. I also think it makes sense if the ghost tale is more of a scavenger as opposed to something that goes out and hunts have it behave similarly to a vulture, which are creatures that are often associated with death as well. One of my favorite parts of designing this creature here was actually coloring it. One of my favorite color combos has always been that spectral green sort of color and a dark grayish purple. They work so well in portraying that undead or ghostly type of vibe. Another design note is that I wanted to have those large wing-like frills down the sides of the tail to not only help it be an even greater flyer, but also gives its tail silhouette from overhead an almost uh, like pincher bug sort of look. Uh, think of like an earwig or you know something like that just to kind of boost that creepy factor a little further. And even though this one here isn't as unique of a design as the first one in the video, um, I still think this dude turned out pretty badass. And it's got me wanting to design some more creatures related to the undead or like those classical monsters like your vampires and werewolves. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the ghost tale here and maybe give me some ideas for animal combinations that I could try out for some future creature design videos here on my channel. And here we have the completed bestiary entry for the ghost tale wyvern. Now let me go ahead and narrate this last one here before we finish wrapping up the video. A great wyvern cloaked in shadow, the ghost tale strikes fear into the hearts of all who bear witness to it. This nocturnal creature's streamlined body and powerful tail allow it to cut and slice through the skies with ease. The deadly green flames it spews from its mouth is not in fact fire, but rather an energy similar to the dark magics used by conjurers of the dead. 
The ghost tail wyvern rarely hunts for prey, preferring to scavenge off the kills of other animals that it can easily scare away. They are often seen near necropolises, lending to the belief that these beasts are guardians of the afterlife. And that's going to be it for today's video, folks. So do me a solid. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Also, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel if you like my work. My next major goal on this channel is 10,000 subs, and we're slowly but surely getting there. So I would greatly appreciate if you could lend me your strength. Also, if you just want to see these uh, completed pieces here, I plan on uploading them all into my Instagram art dump profile. Um, I'll put the link to that in the bio below. But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.